Hello, I'm uh, John Gribben from the Bart Sands Cancer Institute in London. Uh, we are here today at the 12th International Workshop for Non-Hodgkin's Lymphoma. I'm joined by uh, my co-chair, Myron Kuchman, as well as other members of the Scientific Committee, uh, Randy Gascoigne and Wyndham Wilson, and we're going to summarise what we've thought were the highlights of day one of this uh, really exciting meeting. Now, as usual, I think uh, this was, uh, as always, a, a very enjoyable day. What I really enjoy about these meetings is the, the small format allowing lots of time for interaction, and we certainly saw that today with lots of, of audience participation. What, um, what, what do you think were the highlights of what you took uh, today, Randy? Well, we heard, a, you know, I would say quite a large number of really good talks. I would echo the comments you made about the time for discussion. I think uh, that the folks out there need to know that what makes this meeting so unique is just that, that there are didactic lectures, but that we leave a, a huge amount of time for people to get up and ask questions and discussion amongst the participants. And I thought it was outstanding. I, I thought there were large parts of the day that were outstanding. What did I think was the best? Well, I thought our session, John, was absolutely outstanding <laughs> that we did, but um, that aside, I'll reserve judgment on that one and wait to hear what the others have to say. I thought the final session of the day um, um, that actually discussed peripheral T-cell lymphomas and some new developments was a, was a very good session. All four speakers, tremendous, gave us a really good update and a little bit of excitement about new therapies in the pipeline for T-cell lymphomas, which is, which is a huge unmet clinical need. So what I, I found it. exciting in that session was um, Again, the histopathologist putting in context the, the new, more work that's coming out about the cell of origin uh, and the bit that we're already kind of understanding in B cell malignancies, it's finally coming together in T cell malignancies also, that the cell of origin and the genetic uh, underpinning of the disease provides rational targets and we're beginning to see those rational targets hopefully starting to make an impact on, on what we have seen as being a difficult to treat uh, group of disorders until now. Fully agree. So, Wyndham, what for you was, uh, what, what did you take as the highlights of, of today? Well, I certainly hate to say it, but I, I did think that the first session that uh, Dr. Gascoigne and, and yourself ran were, was really one of the highlights where you focused on the micro environment. There's been a lot of work in that, in that area, or at least a lot of interest, uh, which really dates back uh, 10 years or more, but I think that we are now beginning to come up with actual actionable targets. And I think that uh, we've always understood that there is inhibition of I immune surveillance. Strategies have been used for many years to try to overcome that idiotype vaccine. They really haven't worked. Uh, however, I think the, the whole issue with exhaustion of the T cells and now having some of the new checkpoint inhibitors showing uh, a fair degree of activity within solid tumors, I think really uh, represents some uh, very uh, good uh, uh, um, uh, agents that can be used uh, for lymphomas as well. I also uh, enjoyed the large cell session as well. Uh, one of the things that really came up, and again this uh, goes back to some of the work that Randy has been working on, that is the role of MYC and uh, PCL2 in uh, identifying poor prognosis groups within large cell. And I think what really is important about this is that although they're a relatively small group, when we look at the ones that have the translocation, at least with standard therapy, the outcome appears to be relatively poor. And again, although it's a small slice of the overall group, about six or seven percent maximum, uh, we know they do very badly with uh, standard therapy. And for example, there's some there's a large ongoing multicenter trial using the dose adjusted epoch R regimen, and a ASH abstract has been sent in, and the preliminary results look extremely good that the EFS is looking in the 70 to 80 percent range, even for double hits. And so this really may represent the first therapy that might be very effective against uh, this uh, generally uh, poor uh, acting group. One of the things I, I found a little bit surprising from that session was um, the very different attitude that people had about thinking of how we should a, a attack and, and, and treat that. I mean, everyone accepts it's a very poor risk group of patients, but some people are still very conservative of believing that until we've got solid clinical trial data, we should continue with the therapy that we know is ineffective. Um, I was a little bit surprised to hear just how much disparity there were among the experts in the room about how we, how we treat this, uh, that, that entity. 
Well, I think that really what I think people can sometimes be uh, nihilistic about it and that all the data comes from the fact that standard therapy has a very poor outcome. And again, there is emerging data using other more aggressive regimens where the outcome looks better. Uh, retrospective series that have looked at hypercevat, have looked at transplant, and now have looked at dose-suggested EPOC-R have all uh, indicated that more aggressive therapy may be the way to go with these tumors. And perhaps it's not unexpected in that the uh, MYC is really the core uh, molecular abnormality associated with Perkett's uh, lymphoma. And there we know that uh, CHOP does very poorly and you need more aggressive regimens. And all of the strategies that do appear to be more effective, such as hypercevat and epoch -R, are all regimens that are very effective against Perkett uh, lymphoma as well. So I think the parallel exists and I think that it's very rational at this point to think about using some of these other strategies. Right now, uh, people are either using RCHOP or they're going to very draconian uh, measures by taking some of these people to allogeneic transplant. Sure. Just um, taking up on something you mentioned uh, um, before about the, the T-cell lymphoma session and, and then thinking about the microenvironment, there was no mention about the microenvironment in the, um, within the T-cell lymphomas. Is, is that because we don't believe that the tumor microenvironment is important or we just don't know enough about it and it hasn't been focused on by uh, individuals working on T-cell lymphoma? You, you, you see this down the microscope all the time. There, yeah, there, there so must be a, a complex microenvironment occurring in that situation also. Um, yeah, so I think my answer would be twofold, John. I think there there was a review recently actually talking about the immune microenvironment in T cell lymphomas. So one of the challenges we face with those diseases is actually separating the wheat from the chaff. We don't really have very good ways to determine what cells are malignant and, and what cells are benign. And uh, that's been a real challenge. However, I think the next-gen sequencing data are going to help inform on that. And I, and I guess it's, it's we have to walk before we can run sort of thing. So I think we've we got to understand the genetics of the tumor cells yeah. first and then understand the impact of those alterations on the microenvironment in these diseases. And I, I think, as I said, although there was a review, I don't remember where I saw it, it was written recently, um, I think there'll be a lot more data once we resolve the genetics of the disease. People will then, the same way we did in large cell lymphoma and inflicted lymphoma, will then, you know, hopefully at that point, turn our attention to thinking about the non-neoplastic cells. If I, was a, if I was a betting man, I would bet there's no question there's, there's you know, very significant crosstalk between the benign and the malignant cells that could be very important in that disease. But, uh, but we're not there yet. Sure. So Myron, what, what, what were the highlights you took from today? Well, I just think that we had uh, excellent presentations and what I did appreciate was, uh, you know, as we stated, there's a small presentation didactic, but the ability to uh, appreciate the complexity but also the, I say the large number, the wealth of novel potential targets that we can actually, that are druggable, that we can actually, we're using now or actually will be able to be developing in the very near future is very exciting. Now how to put them all together as we discussed is going to be difficult, whether it's going to be concurrent, sequentially based on toxicities and even unknown toxicities, sometimes we combine things that uh, uh, we think they're going to be actually not very toxic, and they are. But I think what's interesting is that uh, we also put an idea that uh, when one does this, it's not just because things have single agent. It has to be um, a thoughtful and uh, a rational type of approach to this to, a, say, maybe a mechanistic hypothesis and then going through and then testing it before we just start putting everything together as a big mix. And I also do appreciate that this is a definitely an international flavor. And we do see that our differences approaches, as we discussed in large cell at one of our sessions today, as if, and it was asked uh, by my friend Randy here, that if you had lymphoma, how would you treat it? And we didn't get the same answer from any of the individuals that were on the sta in the stage. However, I think we do have to appreciate there is multiple approaches, but it is nice to at least have that kind of open discussion to see what are the pros and cons so that we can even open our own minds so we have our experiences ourselves, but to learn from others, especially with the international type of different, uh, you know, type of approaches, uh, different drug combinations that we don't use in the U.S., but they use in Europe. Actually, I think that's actually very exciting that we all can get together with scientists, pathologists, uh, 
and look at the translational work and basic work and actually uh, just have a, a maybe a, open the um, say um, our ideas and maybe uh, have some novel approaches that can be used when we set up trials not only the actual clinical results but with people like yourself and, and Randy looking at the translational type of component what type of other studies correlative studies that really have to be done in order for us to really better understand and improve outcomes. Now tomorrow we're going to talk a lot about individual um, um, novel agents but I, I kind of liked the, in the mantle cell approach where we thought about a disease and you thought about what are the what's the current treatment what's the rationale for thinking what targets to bring in and how might we, we do that so there's two different ways of looking at it one's about the drug but I liked the, the, the approach of thinking about the disease and I always like the approach that we have at these meetings about mixing together the, the pathophysiology with the disease so we can think rationally about bringing the right targets together. So that for me was one of the good features of, uh, of the, the mantle cell session that, that, that you chaired, Wyndham. So I think uh, taking it all together, I think we're all very, very happy with the way the session went today. I think what you're hearing is that we all take from this meeting that the important thing that we, we, we find is the, the, the discussion that happens after short didactic talks, the ability to bring uh, experts together from uh, different uh, backgrounds in terms of histopathologists, clinicians working in different diseases, and bringing that interplay together really makes the, this, this workshop uh, so successful. So um, I think another successful day in very hot uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, and um, we'll be talking again tomorrow about day two of the workshop. <laughs>